Hey guys, it's uh, Saturday night. Uh, I'm already one martini in. I'm about to have my second one now. Um, maybe one of these days I'll do like a John Darko style kind of thing where he shows you how he does his coffee and maybe I'll show you how I do my martinis. Uh, dirty martinis, Hendrix gin, shaken, stirred only when I'm too lazy to shake it, you know. Anyhow, tonight's video, there's going to be actually two of them. This one's going to be on the Orchard Audio Ultra Amplifier. I guess you could call it Revisited, you know, kind of like Steve Hackett's Genesis Revisited, you know. Um, so last summer when Leo sent us the, the demo unit, he basically uh, had, you know, it, it was still a prototype. Um, it, obviously, it sounded amazing. Uh, he'd installed two Nichicon uh I think they were 3,700 microfarad or 4,700 microfarad, I can't remember, capacitors on the plus minus rails. Um, and he basically put them inside the, the Phoenix connectors at the time. Now he sells the, the cap banks, right, um, which, is a mo which is another modification onto the existing uh, amplifier setup. But now he's actually got the, <clears throat> the bottom plate drilled out so that you can install two Hypex um, uh, power supplies, one for each uh, ultra amplifier, and obviously for the for the capacitor banks. And I have actually recently um, got in touch with Leo, and basically what he told me was, okay, I'll send. I'll obviously he's going to charge you for it, right? Uh, prices are on his website. I don't want to start giving out numbers that are wrong. Um, what he'll do for a fee, of course, install a second Hypex power supply, install the cap banks. Um, once all that's done, and I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, there is a difference. Y you guys know I'm a shill for uh, Orchard Audio, right? Uh, regardless of the issues I had with the old Bosque amplifiers, I've fell in love with the ultra amps since last summer you know even though i'm still working on hand building my six uh, amp modules the one that i did buy off of them um, which wasn't last year's demo model because it took a tour to canada and then came back and then somebody else uh, snapped it up <clears throat> well i've had that thing for almost a year now and when i saw that other, you know other people were doing this stuff i contacted leo and he said yeah if you send it back to him He'll put in, install the new bottom plate, uh, put all your old hardware back on, add the second power supply, add the capacitor banks, and it makes a difference. Um, what's the difference? I'll be honest. As much as quote unquote junk of the trunk that there was with the original setup, right, the prototype, adding the capacitor banks, adding um, <laughs> the second power supply, and literally making it a true dual mono amplifier, except for the AC cord, gives you a lot more junk in the trunk, so base extension digs down a little more. And what I found, which was to my surprise, it's a little warmer sounding with the two power supplies and the, and the power and the cap banks and all that fun stuff. Warmer in a good way, not rolled off highs and all that bullshit, but just it's just got m where it had a tube like quality to it when I heard, when I first heard it last summer. It's got even more of that, you know, there's more depth in the mid range. Uh, the, the, the treble or the top end is a little more sweet. So, for those of you that have the existing Orchard Audio Ultra amplifiers. Contact Leo, see how much it'll cost you to get them upgraded to the dual mono version. I did it. You know, I sent what I had up to him. He had it retrofitted. Um, and it made a difference, you know. Um, for those of you that are going on his website and buying the amplifier as is right now for $2,500, yes, there's a lead time. But the good news is the boards are coming. Um, I'm, I cannot commit to a date. Um, everybody knows that the Absolute Sound uh, article came out uh, a couple of months ago and since then Leo's little well, I still call them Bosque amplifiers I don't care B 
Bosch can sue me, fuck it. Anyway, those things were flying off the shelves, according to Leo. Um, he couldn't build enough of them, you know, to the fact where he'd upset people saying, you got a review and where's the amps? Well, Leo's Orchard products are not the only one, guys. Shit Audio's in that situation. So many other company, uh, smaller companies are in that position where they've got the designs, they've got everything ready. Where the fuck are the parts? You know, and, and, and again, this is, I'm not a Trumper. I've told you guys that before, but I wish these fucking chip manufacturers would bring everything back to these shores. You know, Intel's building a whole bunch of fucking sites around fucking Phoenix. Why can't we start building these fucking analog chips here? You know? Ship them to Canada, ship them to Mexico, fuck everybody else, you know. Anyhow, sorry, I, I went off on a really bad tangent, but that's my feelings. Again, going back to the sound quality of the Orchard Audio Ultra Amplifier with the dual high-pec supplies, the capacitor banks on each amplifier module, it just kicks it up a notch to, to quote uh, our, my, you know, Emerald there. Everybody that I've talked, uh, not talked to, but read on the forums and things like that have said the same thing. You know, I mean, when I went to Expona a couple of weekends ago, I pissed off a lot of people because I would go into a GAN room, whether it was AGD or if it was my tech, and I'd basically say tubes and Class A and Class A amplifiers are dead, right? And wait a minute, aren't you the guy with the bat preamp feeding into the Orchard Audio amplifier, you know, and using the Orchard Audio DAC into the bat preamp? Okay, fair enough. But the truth is, these tiny little GAN chips, you know, whether it's Leo's products, whether it's uh, uh, AGD, MyTech with their $10,000 fucking whatever, you know, then there's the Jeff Rowland guy, right? It's the, it's the future, you know? I mean, all these transistors that all these other companies are using, it's all built offshore, right? And, you know, I don't, I can't, I don't know what other amplifier manufacturers' lead times are, I'll be honest, but as far as Leo stuff, the GAN chips are already available. You can go on Mouser, you can go on New Newark, whatever, you know, you type in GAN systems and the part number, away you go. So getting back to the sound of the amplifier, yes, more junk in the trunk. There's more bass extension, as I said before. Mid-range, it's a, it's a, there's a lot more to it. Top-end extension, very tube-like, more tube-like than it was last summer. And I'm not, it's, not the, it's not the martini talking, which reminds me. Cheers to the weekend, guys. How many Bose speakers have had fucking drink stains on them? These ones had drink stains too. Um, anyways, um, what else, guys? There's going to be another video that I'm going to drop this weekend, and it's on the Orchard Audio DAC. Uh, 